Diamond takes a look under the hood. Here's your look at the new Diamond Select. This is the Red Hood Gallery Diorama Statue. This dynamic gallery diorama of Red Hood, aka Jason Todd, is based on his appearance in DC Comics. It is cast in durable, high-quality PVC and features detailed sculpting and collectible quality paint applications. It was designed by Sean Knapp and sculpted by Joe Mena. Before we get a closer look at the Red Hood Gallery Diorama statue, the first thing we're going to do is calculate how tall the statue stands. That sounds like a good idea. Instead of taking it to the top of his head, instead I'm going to take it to the top of his katana blade, as that is the highest point on the statue after all, and stopping the tape measure right there to regurgitate it bleh, to you, the members of the viewing audience. You're looking at the statue of Red Hood standing 14.1 so a little over 14 centimeters, 14 inches tall. Speaking of centimeters, I was jumping the gun too quickly there. 35.8, so almost 36 centimeters tall, is the brand new Red Hood Gallery Diorama statue. I'd like to thank the folks over at Diamond Select who provided this sample of Red Hood that we're going to have a look at in this review. Picking the statue up, it is comprised of PVC plastic, as with some other cases that we've seen in the past. The base itself is generally quite hollow. There's very little weight happening here, with really more of the weight centered and focused on Red Hood from the knee all the way up. The base itself sort of looks like a column, part of perhaps the building. Maybe this is the rooftop here, and Red Hood is leaping across this area to lunge forward with the katana in his hand. For, this, for the actual base itself, as you can see, it's sort of a combination of gunmetal gray, washed a little bit, dry brushed perhaps a little bit, with more of a copper brown. As I said, there's really not much happening on the underside here. It's really a good, smart thing that they do it the way that they do. It keeps the cost down because there's less plastic having to be utilized here on the underside. Sort of also serves a bit of an echoing chamber if you want to talk into it if you want. But the base itself, though light, yes it is. It's still a decent looking base and it doesn't pull anything away from the details then on Red Hood himself. Speaking of Red Hood, let's have a look at Red Hood, who's actually, again, leaping from what I'm guessing. He's probably leaping across this. I don't know how much more busyness there is on the terrain itself that he feels the need to leap over this area, but nonetheless, you can see that he is posed here with a katana in his hand. Ironically enough, the katana is removable, so if you wanted to, you can slide that completely out. I'm not really sure why specifically they made it so that you can remove the katana, unless when it just came down to molding it was just a lot easier to mold Red Hood completely on his own, and then mold the katana as a separate piece altogether. Slightly warped, unfortunately, but it's still a decent looking representation of the katana blade, as you can see there. The hilt has been wrapped and done in brown with an alternating little diamonds of gold. Uh, the gold al along the top guard there as well, and the blade itself has been painted nicely in a metallic silver color. There is really no other place that you can house this. So if for some reason, even though it is removable and maybe you'd like to display your Red Hood without the katana, there is really technically no other place that you can house it on the statue itself. It's sort of it's just kind of sitting in limbo. And I guess the downside too is without the katana, it seems sort of perplexing as to what exactly he's doing. Is he jumping up in the air? He's letting out a big yippy yippy? I'm not really quite sure. I'm wondering also, too, if perhaps the plan down the road is maybe to swap out the katana blade with a pair of pistols, or at least one here on the end. As you can also see, he's got holsters located on both sides of his leg, here and here. But he does have no pistols inside those holsters. They're completely empty. Hmm, got me certainly wondering. Maybe there will be a variant of this guy down the road as a convention exclusive. If he's already drawn the pistols out, maybe there's a plan that he's going to have one wielded in his hand instead of ex except for, again, without the katana blade that we've already had a look at. We'll go ahead and slide that just in place for the time being, as that's so, certainly the only thing he really has to hold on to for the time being. Let's have a look at the statue itself. Now, Red Hood, as depicted here, has a red hood. 
Very, very well done there, humbled reviewer. But it's nicely done, I have to say. It's done in a metallic gold. Now, they could have used the same metallic... Well, that's not technically the case. He does have the same metallic gold done here on his chest emblem. But he certainly could have gone with... Or Diamond certainly could have gone with the route of maybe just giving him a matte gold. So I like also that they gave him metallic gold. It certainly does resonate a lot more. And when you got the light hitting on, reflecting in certain angles, it does, I have to admit, look rather nice. They've also additionally add to that his white eyes, and outlined in that is black panel lining. So at least the eyes do pop. The helmet is smooth to the touch, although there's a little bit of friction and texturing done to it. It's likely probably the way that they just used the paint. Uh, for his outfit, the rest of his outfit, of course, he's wearing his jacket rolled slightly up on the sleeves. And then, of course, his suit underneath there with his armor plating. And just visible enough is the bat emblem. A slight variation to the one used by the Cape Crusader. Primarily, all the statue is black or gray or a combination of the two. So it's nice, again, to see a little bit of pop of color with the jacket done in brown, the zippers done in silver, and, of course, those pops of color in the red, both in his emblem and also in his helmet as well. Uh, as for his boots, as you can see, there's a little bit of scuff that they've added onto the back end of it, so that's a nice touch as well. Generally, just a little bit of wear added to the boots, so they're not as clean, perhaps, as his pants. Uh, equally, though, I mean, even his holstered areas also have a little bit of wear. It looks just to be on the edged areas there, and he's also got a little bit of silver there on the front. Paint aside, I love the sculpting that they put to the, at least the pants. You got like little stitch lines done on the interior of the thigh, as well as along the top there as well. He's got a little bit running up the middle, all the way up his chest, and he's got some decent wrinkles happening here in the jacket as well. There's the back there as well, just in case you wanted to see what it looked like. Uh, the only thing I'm really not sure about is the pose, to be honest. It's a decent pose, and I get what's supposed to be happening here. Again, he's probably leapt across this to lunge forward to his with his katana blade. But I don't know if I think the pose works as well as perhaps it should. Maybe if he was wielding the katana with both hands, as if he's going to be swinging it down. Instead, it kind of looks like he's more posing than anything else. Uh, the paint is good. The sculpt is decent on this. But again, I'm not sure really on the pose. I feel, if anything, there could have been a better possible pose of what they could have probably displayed Red Hood here when it came to his gallery release. We haven't gotten a lot of Red Hood statues, so it is a nice treat to see Diamond Select tackle the Red Hood as they're one of their gallery releases. Again, going back to a point that I would mentioned earlier, the paint is pretty good and the sculpt on the guy is decent enough, but again, I'm not really sure on the pose. Him leaping across the base podium that he has underneath him works fine and good. And I like the pose that they put him in his legs. I think it's more so his arms, in all honesty. One arm is sort of just bent back, and yet it's still up in the air. The other one is way up in the air as he's holding his katana in place. Again, I feel like if he had maybe been in a more swiping down gesture, maybe with both hands wielding the katana by its hilt, maybe that would have been pulled it off a little bit more successfully. As it stands right now, it looks like he's sort of in a congratulatory hooray pose as he's posing on top of the podium, and maybe somebody's taking his picture. It's not one of the better poses that I think Diamond has put into their statue releases, but still is a Red Hood statue as it goes. It's a decent-looking Red Hood, even though, again, I'm not so crazy on the pose. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the Red Hood. i also like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select who provided the sample that we had a look at in this review. I think Red Hood is available now through various online sites and comic book stores if they're open currently. So if you're in the market of picking this one up for yourself, I would say check around various online sites check around to various comic book stores. And don't forget, during these troubling times around the world as the global pandemic still stretches across the world, keep in mind to support, if you can, the local comic book stores. They're the smaller guys, after all, and they could really use the business. So if you are, like I said, in the market of picking up figures, collectibles, statues, whatever it may be, check your local comic book stores. Support your local comic book stores. If you're new to also the channel and liking the content that you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting the subscribe button down below. Move on over as well to turn the bell notification on and just kind of an FYI to anybody that's watching. Uh, videos are going to be hitting to the channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a good way to lock that in place so that you always know when a new video is going to be popping up. And of course, we try to do premieres from time to time as well. So if you ever get a chance, stop by and just say hello. 
As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.